Okay guys, so today we're going to be doing a bit of a review on our Tamiya Komatsu G40 Bulldozer. Now this is 48 scale this guy. And I've seen, I've done a bit of reading on the internet and had a look at a few pictures and this is obviously a typical Tamiya kit. Very nice, uh, goes together really well. It's not as detailed as some kits as in, detailed I mean as in small parts and difficult assembly it's a lot a lot easier than um, say like dragon kits and things like that but typical to me it falls together beautiful to build and the detail on the um, the actual built-in detail is very nice apparently so <coughs> nice box art on there guys uh, typical to me again and around the side here we've got some nice little pictures and our number here is item three two five six five and uh, some more box art around the side here and apparently a figure does come with this there's well, that's typical to me that's that's all about all the box art you're going to get there's nothing to do with uh, photo etch or anything because to me I normally don't do a lot of photo etch for their kits okay so what we'll do we'll pull out our instruction sheet here uh, a few little advertising things there sheet and this is our instruction so this is a one of those simple little fold out instruction things guys uh, to me again it's it's nice and clear all the parts are numbered and I'm not sure yep there is paint call outs here uh, for hoses and things like that uh, from what I understand the tracks on this are uh, like a one piece tracks um, as in uh, like solid piece tracks they're not vinyl or anything like that uh, but they're one piece they're built onto it and the sag is built into the top of it I'm actually looking on the screw there now I can see that which is nice uh, there's nothing worse than those old vinyl tracks where there's no sag or anything and you've got to actually put wire in the tracks to make it sag and things like that but it's got the sag built in luckily uh, yeah very simple build guys if you can see there that's there's not a lot to it. Uh, we've got a little figure down here with the paint call out colours as well. Um, yeah, very simple instructions. So it's say 48 and being in some area, it's not a lot of detail as in a heap of photo etch and little tiny parts and things like that. It's Everything's built into the detail as it is. Uh, we've got our, our little decal sheet down here. Okay, so we've got some uh, metal decals here. I'll, I'll get these up to the camera up here so you can see those they're the little rub, rub on metal decals uh, I think they're for I'm not sure what they're for I'll have to look through them actually there may be gauges or something like that guys and um, the Komatsu badge on the front I would say and there's obviously some more decals in there as well so what we'll do we'll just pop the bags open here we'll have a quick look and see what we've got Okay, so this is obviously typical to me. I'm just going to try and find my glasses here quickly, guys, because my eyesight's not the best these days. Too much modelling and <laughs> worn them out. Okay, guys, very, very nice detail on this. Um, everything's crisp and clean. This is just, I mean, it's just what you expect from Tamiya. We've got um, these little pins up here, as you can see, hanging on. They'll have to be trimmed off and sanded back where you cut those off. But other than that, very, very nice. And yeah, no flash or in there, no injector pin marks that I can see that would be obvious. Uh, all the injector pin marks are back inside where you should not see them. Depends on how you're going to have this thing. If you want it torn open or the lid lifted or something like that, you may have to clean some of those up. But otherwise, that's that's very nice. Typical to me. Um, probably going to hear me say that about a hundred times because there's not a lot of surprises with to me because. Um, they're not cheap <coughs> well they're not the most expensive but they're not cheap but you always know what you're going to get with Tamiya and again this sprue here is no different uh, with little hoses down here beautiful obviously there's going to be some seams on there I can't actually see any flash on those hoses but there's going to be a seam line on there that will have to be cleaned up um, the figure looking at the figure he's very very ordinary <laughs> so if you want to use the figure guys he's um, I'll get him up to the camera here for you and hopefully you can see him there he's yeah he is rather ordinary guys uh, the, the facial details just aren't there his uniform just like a pair of shorts and a, and a short top shirt 
but you know, I mean, it's, you don't have to use a figure, and you, you know, a little bit of work you could get him up to scratch. Again, the uh, injector pin marks <clears throat> are all on the, the right side, so they're not going to show up in some of the places. I uh, would say these hoses here on the back of here, there's a little injector pin mark there, someone here. Depending on where they're going to fit when we put it together, you may actually see a couple of those, but they shouldn't be too hard to clean out there. Just scrape them out with a knife or something, but yeah, that should be fine. Uh, so, like I say, no surprises in there with the um, with those parts, and I think that's about it, guys. We got um, apparently the the painting for this. You only have okay. Let's quickly get him up there. We go. You only got the one option here for our painting. Um, which I mean, there was there wasn't a lot of these made. I think there was about 150 of these made, or something like that. And they're only used in in the airfield construction, so there wasn't a lot of them made. So obviously, there's not going to be a lot of um, options. And there's those little metal badges we we're talking about that that will rub onto there. Um, yeah, your paint callouts are all there. <coughs> obviously, pretty much one over colour. Imperial Japanese Navy. Um, and you've got your you know, looks like a, a rubber black for your hoses and things like that obviously but yeah guys that's, that's about all there is to it now these guys here this the assembly we've got for the suspension apparently it's very simple but again to me they're not going to go overboard with suspension very simple it'll go together fairly easy fairly quick now the good thing about this kit the thing that I'm really looking forward to is not so much the construction of it but the weathering, this this screams out for diorama, or it screams out for weathering, being a bulldozer. I mean, even the box art there, you can see this this beautiful weathering that you'll be able to put on there. Um, and diorama ideas, I mean, it's endless. These things were used for airfield construction, so there would have been a lot of them left in the field. And I've seen dioramas and, and even just stand alone with a bit of bush around it, where they're all rusted out and things like that, just being left on whatever island they were working on. So, <clears throat> some, some really great options there guys, and that's going to be the fun part of this kit. The build is obviously going to be fairly quick. Uh, you could probably add a few details if you'd like, but it's a very simple day, so there's not a lot of uh, details there anyway. So, um, <clears throat> put it together, then the fun part, the painting and the weathering. That's the, um, this kit here, fast build, but the fun, and that's what we do, the, the, the hobby for us, the fun part is going to be the painting and then the weathering. The, the weathering on this, it's just your imagination is your only limit here. So <clears throat> jump on the internet, have a look at what some other people have done with this kit. And it, honestly, there is some beautiful stuff that people have done with this kit. And it just screams out for people to actually use their imagination, do what they like. Now, there's history written on the, on the uh, instruction sheet here. And it's quite an interesting little history on these guys. They're actually built for airfield construction for the war. And there was only like about 150 of them manufactured or something, so there wasn't a lot of them out there. But um, a lot of them got left behind and things like that. And there's only one left, um, well, that's from what I understand, there's only one left in a museum somewhere. The rest of them are gone. Um, so they're lucky to even have that one left, apparently. Okay, modelers, so we're up to the point now where I've got the kit together. And I've got to say, it's a typical Tamiya kit. It just went together absolutely beautiful. And there's not that many parts. There's only like, um, there was two sprues with a few parts on them. It, it's, you know, the, the, it's not a complicated kit. It's very, very easy. Went together absolutely really beautiful. Um, and as you can see, it looks looks really nice and neat. Uh, so all, I'm, all I've done, I've put a base coat on there, like an undercoat. And then I've sprayed it with a, a chipping color, like a dark sort of rust color. And now all I'm doing, I'm going over it with, just forgive the lawnmower in the background, all I'm doing is I've got a lighter rust colour on this bit of sponge here, and I'm dipping off to the side, and just going over and sponging a bit of different rust tones all over the whole thing, and I'll, I'll tip it on its side and I'll go over and do that over the whole thing. And I've got, over here, I've got like a whole pack of different rust colours. I won't use too much of these really light ones, but I will go to this more orangey one here and I'll mix up with a bit of the darker one so I've got you know about I'll have about four or five different tones of rust that I'll end up using on this thing um, like going around doing this, this sponge technique and then I'm going to use the hairspray technique after that so I'll keep going on with this and I'll show you this before you know when I do the hairspray technique as to what this looks like with all the different rust tones on it
Okay, my little so the point we're up to now, you can see I've got all the different tones of rust on there. It's come up quite nice actually. There's like with all those different tones, it, it doesn't look too sort of uniform. It looks like there's like all these variations of rust and stuff like that. Um, if, if you're going to have it just as rust, um, there is more techniques you can do to, to make it look a little bit more realistic. But with this one here, because it's going to have uh, more of a chipping effect more than just plain rust, um, I, that, I'm happy with that result there. If you want to see like um, like just plain rust plates, uh, go to my um, like the German armor. There's one there I've done with the, the great big um, the great big artillery piece on the German prototype tank and you'll see I've done the rust plates on that but um, this one here I'm going to do now I've got the hairspray over it you can see that glossy sort of effect over it that's from the hairspray I've got like three nice um, heavy coats of that on there now I'm going to put the caterpillar yellow color over that and let that settle for a couple of minutes then I'm just going to use some water and a brush and start doing the chipping effect hairspray chipping, chipping effect um, when I start doing that, I will turn the camera back on, guys, and show you how that turns out. But I just wanted to show you what the, the rust effect looks like at this stage. Um, obviously, things like the black hydraulic hoses and things like that are going to be painted afterwards, um, mainly because I'm going to spray the whole thing with that caterpillar yellow and then start chipping it. Then I'll go over and paint all the details in, like the handles on the, um, like the grab handles, rubber grab handles on all the joysticks and things like that, and all your levers. Uh, the gauge is set it down in there. I'm going to put a little bit of a, a probably white, but I'm going to yellow it out a little bit because it's obviously it's going to be sitting there. It's going to be rusted out, so it'll have a bit of a yellow tinge to it. Uh, things like that. I'm going to put a few grease effects around the tracks and stuff like that. Put a bit of dirt and mud in those that, that have been stuck in there since you know, like when it was being used, the dirt and the mud and that got stuck in the tracks and it's still there. But anyway, guys, I'll get on with spraying with the yellow, and when I do the chipping, I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, model. So we're up to the point now where I've actually got the the yellow, like the caterpillar yellow. Well, as close as I could get, I've got a, a to me a yellow there, and I've mixed a little bit of orange just to sort of give it that that um, that caterpillar look. If you use a straight yellow, it's just too bright. Uh, mix a bit of orange with it, and it comes up quite nice. Actually, this very very close to the caterpillar yellow. Now, as you can see, I've already started chipping here. All I've done is I've gone over, I've wet all the paint over the top. And I'm just going over with the different brushes. Now, these skid plates down the bottom here, the reason I'm brushing that way is because that's the way they would have worn. Like, like, that thing's been dragged in the dirt and up against banks and things like that. So that's why the paint would have been ripped off it. So I'm going that way. Um, with the ones up, up the side here, it's more of a dabbing effect. Just to sort of fade it out and over where the high parts are I really sort of scrub it off as you can see on here and here where the main pins are and there's three there as well I'll give them a bit of a scrub and it just to knock most of the paint off there and then I'm going to go downwards like so okay and this is a fairly stiff and it's an old brush and I'm also going to go this way as well because again this thing would have been rubbed against a few different banks and things like that as well now one of the things you can do when it's wet like this you can actually put like scrapes in it with a toothpick like so okay now what I've done here I haven't put enough undercoat on that and it's actually going back down to the undercoat um, well down past the the rust coats but it doesn't matter because what we're going to do is put some rust colour on that later on and do some streaking effects on that anyway. Uh, but like I say, just use a toothpick to give it some nice little scratch effects and things like that. And you really sort of want to chip off the edges a bit because that's that's the places where it really would have popped a hiding, okay? So it's basically a matter of just going over and working with it with the different brushes and toothpicks and whatever you want to use. Just keep them working at it nice and slowly don't try and do it in one big hit just do it nice and gentle let it dry sit back have a bit of a look at it um, see if you're happy with it if it's not worn enough do a bit more um, if it's overworn, you can actually do a little bit of faded yellow with a bit of water and brush back over it again to sort of fill back fill it back in but i'm going to go over the whole model now 
and do this and then I'm going to do the coats like the, the black over the hoses and do the seat and stuff like that just to really weather this thing up. Anyway guys I'll keep going on with this and I'll turn the camera back on at the next step. Okay modelers as you can see we're up to the point now where I've done quite a bit of weathering on here. I've been around painted the details like the black hosing and things like that. Uh, all the chipping's done. I've been over painted the tracks uh, in like a done a rust wash and all that sort of thing. I've got the whole thing a bit of a wash um, just to dirty it up and grubby it up a little bit. Uh, I've also done some oil stains uh, or like fuel stains down off where the fuel cap is here. I'm going around putting some grease stains and stuff around all the running gear and that as well. Like these things used to have a lot of grease leaks and stuff like that. I might do a little bit of um, a little bit of that sort of stuff around the hydraulic hosing as well. Like the old original hydraulic hosing stuff on some of this old gear used to break quite a bit or leak. Um, so I'll try and do that as well. Uh, the blade, I've just put a little bit of the AK um, true metal stuff on there just to shine that up. But I'm going to um, dirty that up with a, with a lot of uh, mud and dirt and stuff like that. So my next step is now I'm just going to use weathering powders. Um, a few different colours like I do on the armour. Um, like just use a few different tones, mix them in, um, like get a lot of dirt and stuff down in the tracks and all that sort of thing, a bit on the blade, and then just give the whole thing a bit of a bit of a dust over. And then I'll go around with a bit of detail, like I say, I'll do you know, a little bit of grease, grease point work and stuff like that. And that should just, just about finish it off. Um, I'll have to polish the tips up on the, the tracks like where they touch the ground and stuff like that. But other than that, it's pretty much done. The headlights will have to be painted as well. Um, but yeah, it's coming along. It's it's looking pretty grotty at the moment. But um, once we get a little bit of you know like a bit of um, dust and weathering on there, plus I'm going to do a bit of streaking effects and stuff, it'll really bring this thing to life. I'm actually really quite happy with it at the moment. Um, it doesn't look that much at the moment, but I can just sort of see where it's going and when it's finished off, it's going to actually look like pretty much like I wanted it to. So anyway, guys, I'll keep going on with that. Um, as far as using the weathering powders, you guys know I'd use that. I just use an old brush, dab it on there, then use some white spirit to get it to sit down. Then I'll come over with a, a, another colour and then I'll start brushing that around a little bit like getting dust streaks up the side and stuff like that. But anyway guys, I'll get on with that process and uh, I'll show you how that turns out. Okay, modellers, so we're finished off here now. I've just made a really, really simple little base just to put it on to sort of show it off at the end of this video. Uh, I've got plans to do a, a different base um, where it's actually digging a bit of a trench. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll do that a little bit later on. Um, when I build that base, obviously I will take some more still photos and put that up as well. But I'm actually quite happy with the way it's come out. It looks quite good. Uh, in the stills, you might be able to see a little bit better with some of the stuff I've done with um, the oil leaks and things coming out of some of the joints. Um, like some of this old machinery used to leak pretty bad. Uh, I have actually worked with, with old stuff like this. Not this particular model, but some really old dozers and that out in the scrub out at Blackhall where I come from out, out west. And um, yeah, they were just they were terrible with, with leaks. They always had oil and stuff running out of them somewhere. So I've, I've tried to make that a little bit real by putting quite a bit of fuel and oil stains and things like that. A few grease stains around the grease nipples. Now one thing in this kit that doesn't doesn't do it justice is the uh, the hydraulic hoses. Like the real ones had like a reinforced uh, wiring around them to like make them more solid. Um, and that's not actually shown off in this kit. They don't. That's not actually built into it. But I have seen people do this kit. I don't know if you can buy resin parts to replace them, or whether they actually do wrap wire around it. Um, it does look really good. But I just I wanted to build this one out of box. Um, I haven't put the badge on the nose. Uh, I wanted to have it so it's pretty torn up old piece of machinery, and the the badge has been ripped off at some stage and things like that. And the big Komatsu sign at the front's been knocked off it. Um, but yeah, like I say, quite happy with the way it come out. Now all I've done since last time had the camera on is like I say, I used a, a bit of weathering pastels and um, some AK weathering powders and things like that and just sort of dirted and dusted it up. Built up all the dirt and stuff on the tracks. As you can see, it's built up there fairly thick in, in places because these things, because they're running in dirt all the time, like it would just keep building up and building up. Um, so I've done that and then I'll put silver around the tops of the track so they were polished off. There's a little bit on the front of the blade there where it's a little bit polished up at the front of the blade as well. Um, places like the fuel caps and things like that have been polished. The foot pedals, the handles and all that sort of thing. Um, with really old machinery like this I notice um, I've taken still photos of a few old machines and 
the rubber grips that were on all the, all the control levers used to wear through and so you'd end up with just like steel there um, people used to wrap tape and different things around them but yeah basically just polished steel um, they, they weren't really well looked after the, the old bits of gear like this like I say I'm pretty happy um, I think that's about all I've done that I can sort of tell you um, I put a dull coat over it just to hold all the weathering powders and stuff in place um, the reason I do that is because if I do want to handle the thing if I do want to pick it up and move it I'm not going to rub all the powders off. That's the only reason I put that dull coat over it. Plus, it takes all the sheen out of anything I've missed. It'll knock all the sheen off it, except for the fuel stains. I'll put them on after because I don't want them dulled down. I want them nice and fresh. But anyway, guys, I'll, I'll take a couple of quick stills. Um, well, I'm going to have to see how this camera goes because the, the camera's been sort of a little bit um, playing up a little bit lately. So, I'll see how I go with the stills. If I don't, Hopefully I've turned this enough around for you to get a really good look at um, really good look at everything on there. But anyway, guys, I'll get on with trying to get these stills, and um, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Video, enjoyed this build. Like always, guys, leave your comments below, good or bad, anything you can see that I've missed and stuff like that. Um, and I've enjoyed having you along for this build, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.